All right, welcome back, everyone, to another episode of me reading a book in every subgenre of every genre. If this is your first time here, check out this playlist. It has all my previous book discussions. You might be interested in some of them. You might have read some of them. What I want to talk about today is this thing I'm dealing with. So the library is closed, and that has been my main source of materials for this whole reading a book in every subgenre of every genre project. Well, now that it's closed, it's a good time to check out Project Gutenberg, which is this free site that has access to all literature that are currently in the public domain, and there are a lot of them. So I just had to switch up my plan a little bit, and hopefully at some point the library will come back. With that being the case, what genre am I going to be reading now? I decided to check out the philosophy genre, because this has been topics that I've been very interested in for a long time and never really had the opportunity to really dive into it. Never took a philosophy course, but I am really interested in that stuff. So the genre is philosophy. The subgenre this time is existentialism. And the book representing that is Nausea by Jean-Paul Sartre. Just to let you guys know, I have a Kindle Fire. I don't like it and uh, I'm not actually able to connect it to my MacBook Air anymore, so I've been doing all my reading from my laptop, which is not ideal. So this thing I'm holding right here, this is just a prop. So if there's one thing you know about existentialism, it's probably the term existential crisis, which refers to that feeling you get when you don't know why you're going to work, you don't know why you're going to school, you don't even know why this food is in front of you, and what is the meaning of life. That is an existential crisis. But existentialism is actually a really powerful teaching that allows the individual to make their own choice, to allow them to determine how they want to live and what their purpose is. It's not about saying life is without purpose, it's saying life is the purpose you make of it. And Sutra has this uh, phrase, existence precedes essence, and essence meaning that something is created for a reason, like this Kindle this shitty Kindle is created for the purpose of me reading a book but not able to upload books aside from Amazon onto it. So that is this thing's purpose. However, as humans, our purpose is not, is not clear. Therefore, our existence precedes our purpose and therefore, as we start living, we need to create our own purpose. So Nausea is Sutra's first novel and it's fiction and it's written as a journal from the point of view of the main character Antoine Roquentin who is this just this dude who's wandering around he's trying to work on a project but he's losing interest in it he's waiting for a visit from his ex and that's kind of what he's thinking about sometimes he's thinking about his work most of the time he's just aimlessly wandering from bars to cafes to museums at times and having these kind of philosophical conversations with different individuals in the city now i just want to add this really quickly i you should not use anything i say in this video as a study note all right this is just a discussion. This is just how I feel about the story I'm reading. I'm about halfway through right now and usually how I do it is I'll read to the halfway point, I'll share my thoughts with you, and then at the end of the book I'll come back and I'll revisit some of the points I made or if I have a new profound insight to share, I'll share those as well. So at the halfway point of this book I have to ask this question. What is a real problem? Is an existential crisis a real crisis? I mean, we're living through a crisis right now, you know, like a global crisis, like the economy is down, uh, people are getting sick. How is that compared to an existential crisis where we ask ourselves, what is the point of even staying alive? And a lot of people are like this, right? During this time, they're still trying to live their normal life. They're refusing to let go of what is their normal life. And we have to say, no, you can't do that anymore. Things have changed. And then they go, what's the point of living then? And I feel like that is the type of existential crisis we're now living through. It's like, what, what is the point of all this? And we have to readjust all the plans that we made for ourselves and 
existentialism is about, oh, you being allowed to make your own decisions, but here we are not being able to make them anymore. So that's kind of scary. That's kind of the existential crisis I'm thinking about right now, my own personal existential crisis and stuff, stuff. And that is kind of the problem that Anton Roquentin is having as well, because he's working on this historical project where he stole these documents from, I believe, the Russian government or something. And he's going to write about this figure, this historical figure. And he's working on it. He's working on it every morning and he's losing interest in it. He kind of felt that uh, by writing history, he could sort of capture something. But what is actually happening is by writing history, his own life becomes history as well. And it's making him feel not great. And whenever he has these existential crisis type of moments, he feels this nausea. I think we can all relate to having to work on something that we're losing a lot of interest, a lot of passion for, and we're just wondering to ourselves, what is the point of doing this? What is the point of wasting my days doing this? There's another part of it where he talks about uh, things fitting together. And he's sitting at a cafe, this main character, and he's listening to music, this jazz record. And suddenly he felt like, ah, oh, the music fits with him. There's another conversation where he talks to someone about adventures and how life is all about having these adventures. And what does that even mean? I don't know if he said it or not, but the way I took it was that life is about finding these things that fit together, like a, a jazz song at a cafe, you being there in a cafe at the right time for that song to start playing. And that becomes a worthwhile moment to live. This is not a plot heavy story. It's literally just this dude walking around, wandering around. There are a lot of interesting conversations that happen, a lot of also not interesting conversation, kind of mundane conversations. I felt like this was a nice book to just kind of mellow things out, and not have to get my heart racing in any way. Um, what I'm interested in finding out at the very end, I hope it happens at the very end, I hope it happens at some point in the book and just, doesn't just leave me hanging, is He's planning to, the main character, Antoine, is planning to meet up with his ex at some point, Annie. And he's having all these feelings about it. He's also wondering what is he going to do when he finally meets her after living through everything that he's been going through. I'm interested to see how something like this wraps up. I will check back in with you about this once I finish reading the whole novel. And um, yeah, I'll let you know my, my final thoughts on Nausea by Jean-Paul Sartre, probably right now. Hey, welcome back. And uh, I just finished reading Nausea by Jean-Paul Sartre. And uh, here, are, here are my thoughts. First, I wanna talk about a couple themes that I picked up on. These are kind of existential lessons that uh, I think might be useful if you care to hear them. Well, I'm going to tell it to you anyways. The first one is about absurdity, things that are absurd, and how so often in life we try to make sense of things that are absurd. They're meaningless. Um, at least there's no clear answer to them. And I think the part in the book, let me try to remember properly. I think he was like looking at a tree or something and he's looking at the roots and how the roots grow and just all the different shapes it makes and like why? Why are the why are they these shapes? Why are there so many of them? Why are they here? And it's all very absurd. I mean you can try to you know use scientific logic to make sense of it and that is so much of life that we look at something and it's human nature to try to make sense of things. And uh, sometimes it's better if we just let things be. And that's kind of our life too, the way if we think of ourselves like a tree and how we grow and all the different roots and limbs that we get along the way, all the experiences and uh, trauma that happens in our life. And we try to make sense of it, but it's all, it's all absurd. The next lesson, is about nothingness and the idea of nothingness and what nothingness really means. There is nothing that is nothing. 
because everything is kind of in your brain when you're thinking about it. When you are thinking of nothingness, you are thinking of something. You're thinking of this nothingness. It's this idea in your head. It's as tangible as any other idea that you have. But let's let's move on to the plot of the story. Like, how does it wrap up? How does nausea wrap up? The majority of the second half is about the main character, the protagonist, uh, Antoine. He meets up with his former lover, Annie, and it's kind of an awkward exchange. Upon seeing Annie, he sees that she's changed. She's, uh, she's gained some weight. But overall, Annie is kind of unpleasant to him. She reminds him of all the stuff he's done wrong to her. Uh, he, he, she's also remember things differently from how he's remembering it. Um, she's talking about events that he has no recollection of. She would go on to describe Antoine as a milestone on the road and that he's useful for anybody who needs him. Uh, I don't know if that's like an insult or a compliment. I think it's somewhere in between. Seeing Annie didn't really help him with his happiness at all, but it helped him realize what he now needs to do. He needs to move on with his life. He can't keep thinking about her because Sure, in reality, she has stopped thinking about him. And even if she is thinking about him, she's thinking about details that he doesn't remember. So they're essentially different people from when they were once together. So he decides to go back to Bullville, uh, pack up his things and leave and start a new chapter in his life. And while he's there saying goodbye to the town, he witnessed one of his old acquaintance, the self-taught man, get assaulted and he just feels so bad for him. He now knows that the trauma of that assault is gonna stay with him forever, much like the trauma of Annie is gonna stay with him forever. So the book ends with Antoine in the cafe listening to his favorite jazz record and thinking about the composer that wrote While it. While sitting there, he kind of yearns to be this composer, to, this, to be this person who has created something that can make him feel such emotions and it really does get rid of that nauseous feeling that he has been carrying around with him this whole time. In the end, he decides, you know what, I should keep writing, I should become a writer, that there is value in that. He doesn't know who he'll affect in the world, but having that realization inspires him to, in a way, continue existing. This book is certainly not a page turner. I think there is certainly a time and a place for a book like this. And for me, it was in the morning with a cup of coffee, uh, just kind of empty my mind before I started my day. Um, it, was a, it was very freeing and uh, I don't usually read that much in the morning, but I felt like I needed that <laughs> energy to actually get through this piece. The thing I enjoyed about this book the most, which was not what Sotro was intending for sure, was that it was just nice to read about this character being so aimless and he's kind of wandering around and he's just kind of struggling through, but he's also going to cafes, he's doing different things, uh, going to the library, and it was really just these little things that I, I miss a lot in our current life. So it, it was a nice escape that way too. That's Nausea by Jean-Paul Sartre. This is me, uh, I'm Elliot. I am reading a book in every subgenre of every genre. I'm reading different philosophy books, but I'm trying to read fiction philosophy books because I think there is some, something special about that. And so that's where I am right now. I don't even know if these different philosophies can even be uh, considered genres. I actually don't really, but that's what I'm doing right now. And uh, no one, no one can stop me. You could, you could leave an angry comment, I suppose, on what you think a genre is. That's like a very contentious thing, actually. No one is really sure what genres are. But that's, this is how I'm categorizing it. Uh, so if you're interested in this mess I made. Uh, please follow along, subscribe, and check out these videos right here. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.